the eighth grade, I won the spelling bee at my school. And then I moved on to be the spelling bee champion of Camden County, New Jersey. And because I won that bee, I then moved on to the state championships. I didn't end up winning that competition, but I did get second runner up, which meant that I had yet another lovely plaque to bring home to my family. Now, I remember sitting down in the hallway when I was in eighth grade with my teacher. And I remember she was talking to me in the hallway and telling me that it was okay that I didn't win the competition, that I should be really proud of myself for how I did, and that I simply cannot be the best at every single thing. And I remember at the time looking at her and being like, okay, Mrs. L, it's not that big of a deal, it's just a spelling bee, right? But I dare did not say that out loud because I was a nerdy spelling bee champion after all, and I would never talk back to an adult, let alone a teacher. But what is interesting is that this seemingly innocuous conversation still replays in my mind years and years later. And it makes me wonder if she somehow knew that I was going to need to learn this lesson. Because here's the thing, I was a perpetual rule follower. And for years and years later, and as an adult, I ended up following the rules and conventions that society tells us. I was checking off the boxes when it came to success, happiness, fulfillment, belonging. I was getting all of the degrees. I got the husband, I got the child, I got the house. I had everything that folks would believe would make you feel aligned and happy and authentically yourself. But despite all of these external successes, I was not happy. I was feeling unfulfilled. It was like I had taken this exam of life and I was getting all of the answers correct, but somehow I was still getting a bad grade. And so I'm not going to spell any eighth grade B for wor words for you today. I won't subject you to that. But I do want to spell out this individual thought process these four lessons that I've learned in my life that help me come back to myself and get into that authenticity and alignment. This is based on my own lived experiences that I'll share with you this evening, as well as observations, anecdotes, and of course, some really awesome research from folks that I respect and admire. And as I go through this talk today, I want you to think about this question that I was constantly asking myself as I was moving about through all of these successes in my life. Where do I find my true authenticity and alignment? I'll give you a little hint for today. The answer is actually closer than you may think. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Let's start with college, which interestingly enough, is this very campus where I am giving this talk this evening. I stepped onto TCNJ's campus, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, as a freshman, thinking that I was going to take over the world, I was going to be awesome, I was going to be somebody, I was going to inspire so many people. I felt like I had the entire world eating out of the palm of my hand, until that was no longer the case. I was stressing myself out with all of these classes. I was pulling constant all-nighters. I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating well, and eventually I had a mental breakdown my first semester of college. I was rushed to the hospital, and it was so bad that I couldn't return the spring semester. I had to take medical leave, and I had to take extra summer classes in order to graduate on time. And from that moment on, I never, ever took my mental health for granted ever again. Now, this isn't an experience that is singular to me. This is something that is happening on a national level. According to Dr. Lori Santos, a professor of psychology at Yale University, 40% of college students are too depressed to function. 60% of college students are feeling overwhelmingly anxious and one in 10 college students have seriously considered suicide 
in the last year. This is a problem, and we need strong role models to help us overcome and persevere. And that's when I turn to someone like Simone Biles. Now, here is someone who literally the entire world is watching as she represented the United States women's gymnastics team. In the 2021 Tokyo Olympics, she decided to put herself first, to put her mental health first, and she courageously walked away from several Olympic events. No matter what people thought of her or saw of her, she listened to her own intuition, to her own spirit, her own body, and she had the bravery to walk away. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to letting go or quitting or walking away, we are told not to do it, right? We are seen as failures or that we are seen as losers. This is not something that is encouraged. But as Simone Bile shows us, this is following what is happening in our own bodies. It is having the courageousness to move forward and to learn lessons from these lived experiences. And so the first lesson that I learned in my own roadmap, in my own journey to authentic alignment is this. It's going with that real life learning, right? It is having these experiences, whether they're good or bad, like my own experience as a college student here at TCNJ, or in Simone Biles' experience, and having these lessons to know that you can be who you truly are. You can take care of yourself, no matter what others may think. And remember, the answer is closer than you may think when it comes to that authenticity and alignment. Now, speaking of lived experiences, let me talk about another lived experience, which is motherhood. Now, this is an experience that I can say with the most utmost confidence was super humbling. It was one of the most humbling experiences of my entire life, and here's why. It was a journey to get there in the first place. Now, I mentioned that I was one of those people that loved to check off the boxes, but when you are checking off those boxes over and over and over again, doing what you think that you need to do to get something that you so desperately need and desire, and it's still not working, yeah, that gets pretty old, and pretty depressing pretty quickly. And so, after almost two years of trying to get pregnant, my husband and I decided to turn to the science. We went through IVF, in vitro fertilization, and I gotta say, once we let go and we turned this process over into the hands of our doctors and nurses, it brought in this peace and acceptance, and it was very humbling and transformative. Because as Dr. Lori Santos claims, this is a marker of happiness. It's not about the wealth, it's not about the success, but it is about receiving what is coming at you when it comes to this journey of life and learning in this space and going forward and, and following through. It is all about that sweet surrender. And as Dr. Sarah Lewis so brilliantly describes this Harvard University professor, she talks about this surrender, this act of reframing what may be initially seen as failures, as opportunities. It's these moments where we can have a spaciousness, where we can step into this container and learn and feel into what is happening in our environment and what is happening around us. And it can be quite transformative and quite amazing and quite beautiful. And it is a lesson that I had wished I had learned sooner. So that brings me to that next lesson. It's the shift and the surrender. It is a mindset shift that you don't have to do everything yourself. You do not have to be perfect. It is a giving in. Now notice I did not say give up. It is a giving in, a giving over, a stepping back and just relaxing and having that sense of peace and ease that things will turn out okay and that we don't need to muscle and hustle our way through life as we're conditioned to believe. This was my second lesson, and as y'all remember, the answer is closer than you may think. Now, I talked about birthing a baby, so let me talk about a different kind of birth, which is birthing a business. 
Now, I don't know if there are any fellow entrepreneurs out there, folks that are watching, but when you become a business owner, whew, it is quite an experience. There is all this insecurity and imposter syndrome that comes out because you're no longer relying on a salary. You are out there building trust and confidence in your clients and customers that you want to serve so that they will trust you in return and invest. And so because of all these insecurities that were coming up in my own entrepreneurial journey, I had to tap into some inner work. And here are some tools that I wanna share with you this evening. Now, when it comes to these stories we tell ourselves, before I talk about these tools, I want to share with you that when it comes to this, to stories that we tell ourselves, and I mentioned this surrender, this sitting back, that doesn't necessarily mean we just hang out and say, okay, I'm ready. No, 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 no. This is an active co-creation, an active meaning making with the world, with our lives. We become an active participant. Because here's the thing, if we are going around the world, our lives, our days, telling ourselves that we are unsuccessful or that we're lazy or that we're uninspiring or that we're stupid, that is the story that we're going to keep telling ourselves and that is what's going to happen in terms of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So here are some ways to rewrite and reframe that narrative. One of those tools is affirmations or positive statements that we can tell ourselves. Now, as Clayton R. Critcher and David Dunning tell us in their research, affirmations are wonderful ways to broaden our perspective, to find a new way of looking at things, at events that seemingly look like threats, and it's a way that we're able to get a broad-eyed view of a, of a situation while tapping into our own innate self-worth. Because here's the thing, let's think about this. Has there been moments in our lives where we are stressed out, we're anxious, we're worried about something, and then a year later, months later, maybe even a week later, we're not even thinking about it. So that's what these affirmations do. They get us in the moment, and as well as taking a step back and seeing the bigger picture. So reframe the story, broaden the perspective, and in addition to that, tap into a little creativity with it. Because as David Kelly shares in his TED Talk, creativity is not something that is just set for a lucky few. We all have the ability to be creative. We all have the ability to exercise this amazing muscle. And when it comes to living a more authentic and aligned life, what that calls us to do, what that invites us to do, is to step into it with a curiosity instead of with fear. So again, broaden that perspective and reframe the stories that we're telling ourselves. And that takes us to the third lesson, the third way that I found that authenticity and alignment, it is through affirmative expression. So with that, what lights you up? What invigorates you? What are you passionate about? What motivates you to get out of bed every single day? Yeah, that thing, those things do more of that because that's going to help you get closer to who you truly are at your core. And remember, again, that answer is closer than you may think. Okay, friends, we got one more. And I know that we are on a college campus this evening, so this message is for the college students out there. Here's the thing. The future is scary. The unknown can be very scary. I started off this talk by recounting my brief stint as a spelling bee champion. And in that situation, the objective was very clear. Spell words correctly. Now, as I've gone about my life, I tried to use that same approach with everything else. Do things correctly. But here's the thing. There is no such thing as doing things correctly. There is no such thing as being perfect or doing things perfectly. We're not called to be the superwoman that I'm trying to be when I was young or the wonder woman that my little one is displaying and may be led to believe as she grows up years later. We just need to be ourselves. We just need to be who we are and be happy and excited about that. Because that brings us to that final lesson, 
It's about that intentionality and that self-empowerment. Be you, be present, have fun. This is a time where we can be alive and try new things and live new experiences. And here's the other thing, we don't have to go about it alone. We can find community. We can have people that can help us out and can lean it on us and we can lean on them. Because as Emily and Amelia Nagoski speak about in their book, Burnout, social connection is just as vital as food and water. So find that community and lean on each other and empower each other. Now, I mentioned that the answer is closer than you may think. So let us have a little bit of a review. I mentioned this roadmap to alignment, these lessons that I've learned throughout my life that have helped me get closer to who I am, that authenticity, and it's this, the real life learning, the shift and surrender, the affirmative expression, and that intentional empowerment. Well, I'm a writer, I'm an academic, I'm a nerd, and I'm creative. So I wanted to change it up a bit to make a cute little acronym that'll be a little bit easier, easier for y'all to remember. So instead, I want you to remember these four words. Model, understand, structure, and expand. M-U-S-E. Now, at the start of this talk, I mentioned that the answer to authentic alignment may be closer than you may think. I don't know if you caught on by now, but I wasn't sure you knew exactly how close. Because the answer is actually you. That's right, folks. You know what is best for you. I don't. No one else is going to. You know what's going to fire you up inside, what you're passionate about, what is true to you. The problem is we get so distracted by everything else that is out there that that voice inside, that inner knowing, that inner muse gets a little clouded. It gets, it, gets, it gets silenced a little bit. It becomes a whisper. So we need to do the work and cultivate that and bring that out. Because this is a new lens, my friends, a new way of trying to strive for that happiness and alignment. It's not all those ways that we were led to believe. There is that inner muse inside of us, that muse that will guide us and will lead us to our inspiration, our creation, and our amazingness, just as the Greeks had described. So don't believe society, what corporate America, or what the media tells you in terms of what is going to bring you truly aligned success, happiness, authenticity, and fulfillment. All of that is just a ruse. Y'all just need to find your inner muse. Thank you so much.